All right. What is up, traders? What's up, tycoons? Super excited for today's video. We're going to look at Jeppy versus Devo. Now, one is the ultimate yield retirement dream ETF. All right. We're going to break that down in today's video. It's going to be a little long. It's going to be really in depth, though. So you guys will really appreciate all of the information and we have in this video. Uh, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. All right. In summary, covered call ETFs are potentially great choice for certain kinds of investors seeking high income and low volatility in tax deferred account. JP Morgan's equity premium income ETF is the most popular high yield ETF in this space and for good reason. JP management is is guiding for 8% long-term returns, 80% of the S&Ps with 35% lower volatility. Now, Amplify's CWP Enhanced Dividend Income ETF is a five-star rated alternative that has historically delivered superior returns to JEPI, but there are several very important factors that you need to know before buying the Devo ETF. We're going to break down all of that in today's video. As always, the content provided on this channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice, so please be sure to read through the full disclosure. Now, um, <clears throat> JEPI was one of the most popular exchange traded funds of 2022, and for good reason. It's been a low volatility port in the storm, harnessing the market's high volatility to generate 12% income paid monthly. As I explain in this deep dive, um, JEPI basically is the gold standard of covered call high yield ETFs. And that's not just from me, but from the accountant. So from a tax perspective, right? And so you can see here, we have the JEPI ETF here in blue. All right, we have the NASDAQ and the S&P as well on this chart. And you can see since January of 2022, all right, JEPI is actually green up 0.32%. Uh, Meanwhile, the other two are down since January of 2022. So basically from all time highs, okay? Now, since the bear market began, JEPI's assets under management are up 352%. Right. And there's no surprise here after the chart I just showed you guys. Right. It makes a lot of sense that uh, they're seeing tons and tons of info into there. All right. Over twenty six billion dollars now under management. Now, the great thing about such head to head comparisons is that no matter who comes out on top, the winner is the best ETF you can buy. So let's take a look at how Devo stacks up to Jeppy for the title of the ultimate high yield dream retirement account ETF. Now, Jeppy's yield is down to 8.5% based on the most recent dividend payment, which is what you should expect in a freakishly low volatile environment. It's down to a four-star rated ETF, according to Morningstar, All right? And what we're seeing here, talking about the freakishly low volatility environment, the VIX index, which is the volatility index, is down, and it's really, really low, guys. I mean, we're almost at pre-pandemic levels here, um, you know, below 15%. We're headed into a recession, and yet market volatility has collapsed. Okay, very strange, very odd to see the volatility index so low right now. Now, <clears throat> you look at the attractive yield versus other asset classes. You have U.S. equity, ten-year bond, global REITs, um, and U.S. high yield. Jeppy is above all of those. So, compared to other income alternatives, Jeppy remains an attractive four-star option. Now, compared to other um, alternatives. Uh, Jeppy remains an attractive four-star option, as I just mentioned. Uh, and why is it rated four stars? Because its historical returns are in the fourth quintile, the top 21 to 39% of its peers. And its historical return since inception is 12.3% or 8.2% adjusted for taxes. In the last three years, its 11.5% annual return puts it in the top 20% of its peers. And its tax-adjusted 7.5% returns puts it in the top 39% of its peers. Now, when you take a look at their investment process, okay, Jeppy is a conservative equity solution compromised of two fundamental building blocks, a defensive equity portfolio of U.S. large cap stocks and a disciplined options overlay. Now, they've got a multi-longed uh, or a multi-pronged approach to total returns. It's designed to provide distributable income through a combination of dividends and options premium. In return for the options premium, investors may forego a portion of the market's upside. Options premium generated can vary dependent upon market volatility. As volatility increases, the potential for incremental income and upside also increases. And so if you look at the annualized returns observed in a historically normalized environment, 
The options premium is going to get you about 5 to 8%, and the dividends are going to get you about 1% to 2%. Now, higher volatility environments have allowed for more potential income, while lower volatility environments may deliver less income. And, you know, a good way to measure this is, right, is when the VIX is lower, option contracts are typically cheaper. And when the VIX is higher, option contracts tend to be more expensive. So when you see that high VIX, that high volatility, uh, generally you're able to, you know, create more premium and more income uh, through, you know, covered calls in the sense. Now, <clears throat> when you talk about the defensive equity portfolio, it leverages a time-tested 30 plus year investment philosophy and process to solve for a lower beta, lower volatility experience. And you've got the options overlay, which is one month out, out of the money call options designed to generate income and give investors a portion of the upside with reduced volatility. And that combined together equals JEPI, which is a well-diversified strategy designed to have daily liquidity and lower volatility and beta than the S&P 500 index. By providing distributable income, the portfolio may forego a portion of the market's upside. Now, Jeppy's managers use an underlying low volatility blue chip portfolio combined with one month out of the money options, specifically exchange traded notes or ETNs. Those are about 15% of the portfolio to generate 5 to 8% annual income. Now, per management guidance, the result is a 6% to 10% return ETF before taxes. Or to put it another way, according to management, Jeppy is designed to offer about 80% of the market's returns with 65% of volatility and high monthly income. So that's a really great summary, a really great way to put it. If you wanted it in one sentence, that's a great one-liner right there. Now, speaking of manage, management, here are the people who's running Jeppy with over 60 combined years of experience in options, covered calls, and ETNs. You have Hamilton Reiner, and then you have Rafael Zingoni. Um, they have over 60 years, as I just mentioned. In addition, the ETF leverages the insights of over 20 ex experienced U.S. equity career analysts and a time-tested 30-plus year investment philosophy and process to solve for a lower beta, lower volatility experience versus the S&P 500 index. Now, with 15% of the portfolio invested in ETNs, Jeppy is able to achieve remarkable monthly income. The expertise to safely do this, at least so far, is what investors pay JP Morgan 0.35% per year for. Notice the peak monthly yield in October, the current bear market bottom. So you know you can kind of see this right here. The dividend was the highest right here in October. And really since we've gotten out of you know those October lows, right, you can see that the the premium all right has started to decline as the volatility index has started to drop. Okay. Now, management guidance is for 6.5% annual income from ELNs over the long-term basis or 54 basis points per month. Now, the top 10 holdings all right, are going to be Adobe, Microsoft, Amazon, Hershey, which a lot of people sleep on Hershey, ticker symbol S-H-Y. All right. Um, that stock actually made all-time highs last time that I was looking at it. I haven't checked on it in you know a month or two, but... Big sleeper stock right there, okay? People love their chocolate and their candy. Um, you have ACN, which is Accenture. You have MasterCard, Comcast, PepsiCo, Alphabet, and Progressive. Now, note the 195% turnover is sky high because of the monthly options and active management. That's why the historical tax cost ratio is 3.6%. Now, since its 1993 inception, SPY has averaged a 0.59% tax expense ratio with a 2% annual turnover. Now, Jeppy is not a, ball, uh, a bond alternative, okay? And if you take a look, as volatility increases, the potential for incremental income increases here as well, okay? We kind of spoke about that earlier, but, you know, it's definitely not going to be a bond alternative, and this is one of the main reasons, okay, is because actually when things get more volatile, the potential to create more income is even higher, all right? Um, and if you take a look at the indicative annualized options premium in yellow right here, okay, and then you have the average options premium right here is just going to be this green line, okay? You can see here when volatility spikes up, which is going to be, um, you know, the gray, all right? So the gray is the VIX, and you see when the VIX spikes up, you see that that option, um, you know, premium that you're generating is very, very nice. Okay, it's very nice, and you're able to generate some, you know, higher income. Now, if you think Jeppy will make money in a bear market, you are wrong. It's not a bond alternative. Okay, and so if you take a look here, 
Um, don't forget that Jappy was built for 66 to 80 percent of the market's long term returns over time with about 35 percent lower volatility. OK, and if you take a look here from January 1st through March 31st of 2023 and you take a look at the returns. All right. Um, the returns of Jeppy is about 1.71 percent. All right. Versus the S&P had returned about 7.5 percent at that time. OK, so again, you're giving up a little bit of the upside here uh, for that monthly income and for the lower volatility. Now, <clears throat> if you think that Jeppy will beat the S&P over time, you are wrong. It's not an S&P alternative. OK, so, you know, you have to realize what Jeppy is. Right. It's it's not an alternative for the S&P 500. All right. And it's not a bond alternative. It's amazing at what it does, but it's not right for everyone. OK, in fact, only about three kind of investors should ever consider owning it. Now, the three kind of investors that can or should own Jeppy as a great or ideal choice is one, if you own it in a tax deferred account, which is a good to great choice in this case. Right. Number two is Roth IRA investors who want a single stock retirement plan with better returns, yield and lower volatility than a 60 40. Right. Than your typical 60 40 portfolio or in tax deferred. Right. With the 401k IRA uh, investors who want a single stock retirement plan better than the 60 40 plan and plan to donate their entire account to charity. This is the perfect solution for you. Now, I don't know too many people who fall in all three of these. And I definitely don't know anybody who plans to donate their entire account to charity. Um, if you guys do, you know, I'm pretty sure that you guys are in some really, really nice positions in life uh, to be donating the whole account to charity. So uh, that's awesome. Now, if you're one of these three kind of investors, then Jeppy is a potentially good or even ideal solution for your needs. If you're not one of these three kinds of investors, then you may honestly want to avoid Jeppy. Now, Devo is going to be the challenger for the throne. So <clears throat> Devo is a five-star rated ETF better than Jeppy, though we'll now have to check how long it's been around. The yield is much lower and the expense ratio is 0.55% or 0.2% more than Jeppy. Devo has been around since December 2016, older than Jeppy and Jepix, and has returned 10.9% uh, annual returns or 8.6% after taxes. In the last five years, it was in the top 1% of its peers for both total returns and tax-adjusted total returns. So Devo is bringing the heat, and so far, it looks like a very worthy contender to Jeppy. Now, they come with a proven approach to high-quality equity income. It's designed to offer monthly income while providing high-risk-adjusted returns that corresponds generally to the CWP Advanced Dividend in uh, Income Portfolio. Now, Devo seeks to provide gross annual income of approximately 2 to 3% from dividend income and 2 to 4% from options premiums. Now, some of the reasons to invest would be two potential income streams. Now, it seeks income from dividend paying stocks and by opportuni uh, opportunistically riding covered calls on those stocks. It's professionally managed, so you guys can access a professionally managed dividend and op option income strategy through the efficiency of an ETF. And it seeks to lower volatility. So dividend and option income may provide lower share price volatility versus the overall market during times of broad-based market declines. Now, since its inception, the covered call index has delivered 5% returns and Devo is designed to beat that slightly. It's managed to crush its peers and thus the 99th percentile returns a five-star rating from Morning Star. Let's dive a little bit more into it, into their selection methodology. And in the portfolio selection process, they place a strong emphasis on identifying publicly traded high quality large cap companies with historical dividend and earnings growth, balancing the portfolio selections among uh, the 10 S&P sectors with appropriate over and underweighting as determined by the portfolio managers, assembling a portfolio of 20 to 25 stocks that have been screened according to attributes such as earnings, cash flow, return on equity, and management track record. And four is going to be that tactical covered call writing on individual stocks to conservatively boost the income generated by the portfolio record. Now, writing covered calls may limit the upside and potential of the underlying security and does not protect against loss beyond the option premium received. The strategy seeks to provide gross annual income of approximately 2 to 3% from dividend income and 2 to 4% from option premium. There is no guarantee the strategy will be successful. Now, the turnover is much lower than Jeppy's 195%, and that's why the historical tax expense, uh, tax expense ratio is 2.11%, or about 65% that of Jeppy. So it's got 19% of historical returns go to taxes versus 29% for Jeppy. Now, Morningstar's analysts think that long-term Devo's current uh, portfolio is capable of 10 to 11% annual returns. And they think that the S&P 500 will do around 12%. A high turnover means Devo and Jeppy own very different portfolios over time. 
If you look at the Devo portfolio return over time uh, or their future uh, potential return versus the JEPI future uh, potential return. Now, this is going to be excluding covered calls. Um, you know, right here, we see the P.E. ratio for JEPI is going to be at 19.28 percent. All right. Meanwhile, the P.E. ratio for Devo is about 15. Um, and, you know, you can pause this and dive a little bit deeper into it. OK, look at the cash flow growth here is at 18.83 on Devo versus on Jeppy. It's about 10.4 percent. Uh, the dividend yield on Jeppy is 1.94 and the dividend yield on Devo is about 2.71. So some slight differences there that you guys can dive deeper into. Devo has generated superior returns to Jeppy with slightly higher volatility and equal peak declines. Its negative volatility adjusted total returns are 18% better. Jeppy's negative volatility adjusted total returns are equal to the S&P over time, while Devo's are superior. If maximum returns per unit of negative volatility are your goal, Devo is superior to the S&P, not factoring in taxes. Now, the S&P's historical tax bill is 0.6% or 6% of returns. Uh, Devo's is 19% and Jeppy's is 29%. And so <clears throat> what we're looking at here is the drawdowns, okay? And we have, uh, you know, your typical Vanguard uh, S&P 500 index investor here in green. Then you have the global S&P 500 covered call ETF X, uh, XYLD. That's going to be in yellow there. You have Devo in red and you have Jeppy in blue. So, um, you know, you can see here about the um, basically reducing that volatility. OK, and the Jeppy and Devo are very, very similar um, in terms of, you know, their drawdowns. Um, not exactly the same, but pretty close. Now, don't forget about taxes, okay? And this is why covered call ETFs aren't right for everyone. If you take a look at the average annual total returns, all right, uh, for periods ended December 31st of 2021, all right, the return before taxes, all right, in the past year was 21.61%, all right? And since the life of the fund since 2020, is at 25.23%. Now, the return on taxes after distributions uh, is 1843 all right, the return on taxes uh, or after taxes on distributions and uh, sale of fund shares is at 12.83. The S&P 500 index, all right, reflects no deductions for fees, expenses, or taxes is at 28.71. And um, you can see the three-month treasury bill right here index is at 0 0.05. Okay, so taxes are a big deal for these. Um, and since its exemption, JP Morgan estimates the average investor net of fees and taxes made 18% compared to 25% pre-tax returns. Taxes ate 28% of the gains. But in the past year, 40% of returns were reduced by taxes and high turnover related expenses. And remember, this is just for the average American with a 28% tax bracket. The top income bra tax bracket saw 8% returns over the last year and 12% since inception. So up to 50% of your returns could go to taxes if you're rich, okay? And there's a lot of wealthy people that are, you know, looking at Jeppy, okay? And this could, you know, hit them. And taxes are definitely one thing that you guys have to consider, uh, which is why, you know, these, you know, selling covered calls and really just dividends in general, all of those things, those are really nice to have in, you know, tax deferred accounts. OK, so that way, you know, even if you're just holding a stock and you have the dividends reinvested uh, automatically, um, a lot of people don't realize that you have to pay taxes on those dividends. And so just by simply holding a stock, you know, you're paying more in taxes every year, even if you're not selling it just from the dividends alone. Now, Morningstar estimates that the average American would have paid 29% of Jeppy gains in taxes since its inception, which is about 3.6% per year. Um, so, you know, you can see that's a pretty big chunk right there, okay? 29% of the gains in taxes since its inception uh, is, a, is, a, is a significant amount, right? That's no small amount. Now, don't forget, Jeppy is designed to deliver that 66 to 80% of the market's returns over time. All right. Um, but the main thing is you're looking for lower volatility, right? That's that's really what you're searching for in Jeppy here, right? Um, another reminder, it's not a bond or S&P 500 alternative. It's a specific tool ideally suited for three kinds of investors and only three kinds. Everyone else is better off without Jeppy or any covered call ETF, mutual fund or CEF. Now, tax efficiency over time. So how much of the long term returns do you keep after the taxes? The S&P 500 is at 94%. 
Devo is at 81% and Jeppy is at 71%. And then you have the Global X S&P 500 covered call ETF at about 66%. So in terms of tax efficiency, Devo and Jeppy are superior to XYLD, which is the oldest covered call ETF out there. Now, if you adjust for inflation in a tax-free account, Jeppy, Devo, and XYLD have all seen small to significant erosion of principal. All right, XYLD is down 36%. Uh, Jeppy is down 26% and Devo is down 3%. So the total returns were all paid out as income if you're not dripping, okay? Um, and that is that dividend reinvestment plan, all right? So 29% of their returns go to taxes outside of retirement accounts. 19% uh, of Devo's returns go to taxes and 34% of XYLD returns go to taxes. So, you know, covered calls are not necessarily tax efficient, all right? That's that's one thing that you definitely have to keep in mind, um, you know, when it comes to covered calls and things like that is, you know, uh, it's not the most tax efficient way. It is a way to generate some extra income, uh, but you do want to be, you know, aware of the tax situation around it. So don't forget about the importance of dividend reinvestment, though. Dividend reinvestment or DRIP is always assumed when you see historical returns, right? And so, when you look at the total return since 2018 of Jeppy, and you started off with an initial balance of $1,000, all right, the final balance would be at $1,422. Um, Devo would be at $1,524. Uh, the, you know, S&P, right, the Vanguard 500 index, all right, that would be at $1,555. Uh, so, you know, just simply holding, you know, basically the S&P 500 index, would have outperformed those returns since 2018 of both Jeppy and Devo, uh, but Devo did offer better returns, um, you know, considering Jeppy, right? And again, this is with that dividend reinvestment, all right? Now, if you take a look at the total returns without drip, okay, Jeppy, you'd actually be down from $1,000 to 893. Uh, Devo would be at 1,168, and your average uh, S&P 500 index investor would be at 1,439. So uh, you definitely do want to keep that in mind as well. Um, you know, these things, they are paying you guys and, you know, people always assume that you're reinvesting the dividends back into the fund. Okay. Uh, that's a big part of it. Remember all covered call income is taxed as ordinary income, top marginal tax rate, federal and state, which is up to 55% in New York city for the top tax, uh, top tax bracket. What this means is that if you own any covered call ETF or fund or CEF in a taxable account and you spend the income over the long term adjusted for taxes and inflation, you are steadily losing money. Covered call funds of all kinds are inherent value traps for this reason. So the bottom line is that Devo is the superior covered call ETF, but most income investors will still want Jeppy. Devo is a superior covered call ETF in terms of historical tax returns and tax efficiency. However, most Jeppy investors are going to want to stick with Jeppy for a few key reasons. It's got lower expenses, higher yield, and higher long-term management guidance, 8% long-term returns versus 5.5% from Devo. But remember that there are three kinds of investors and only three kinds should really own Jeppy or Devo or any covered call ETF, mutual fund, or CEF. And those are ones that um, you know own it in a tax-deferred account. All right, Roth IRA investors who want a single stock retirement plan with better returns, yield, and lower volatility than a traditional 60-40 portfolio. Um, and also tax-deferred investors who want a single stock retirement plan better than the 60-40 and plan to donate their entire account to charity. So that pretty much sums up today's video on Jeppy versus Devo. Hopefully you guys learned something new and you guys appreciated this video. If you do, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more.